Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, yeah, we had Moderna out with um, their announcement of vaccines. We did a video, YouTube video, saying that technically speaking, we had still a very strong bullish outlook, which we have uh, put out a whole list of, of stocks to buy. Today, we had some really neat stuff happen. Our algo optimizer kicked in. I just got to tell you again, when we get this volume indicator, which shows negative convergence, this is the, the John Person uh, proprietary volume indicator, uh, and then you get your algo, it fires off a short. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice high probability. When you get the momentum of the volume, when the price goes down, and there's no volume behind it, you generally get recoveries to the upside. And that's what we have. This is a five minute model. This is the two basic trades that we got off today. The other thing I wanted, as far as a day trade is concerned, this trade is not out. It's still an active position. You can see it right here. It's still active as I'm discussing things. Um, in other news, I'd like to point out, this model is our SPY model, which did liquidate on a trailing stop function. If you look here, it may be hard to see in the video, but um, here's the entry, here's the initial risk, trail stop, trail stop, trail stop, and then another functioning trail stop, and it knocks out. The SPXL is a different model that we have. We have two swing trade models that we have automated in our trading room, and this is SPXL a leverage for those that want a little bit more bang for their buck, so to speak, and it is still long because it is a different trailing function. So it's a good indicator and one that we use uh, in the live trading room. My, my personal opinion right now is that we still have a long way to go to the upside in the market and that dips are being continuously bought and that was with no exception. As you can see, even despite the fact that day traders can make money on quick scalps to the short side, I prefer to be long in the market, especially when you have the advances in the S&P 500 today, we're 394 with about 17 minutes left in the end of the day. We have 104 stocks in the S&P 500 that were negative. Now, what my personal uh, beliefs are, despite the fact that we have lots of different models that, that run here for day traders in our algorithm, we have a five minute crude, a five minute pound, and then the five minute gold, but we also have for active traders SQQ. We take long and shorts here. Uh, this one had gotten flat and uh, was short SQQ, which is an inverse ETF on the NASDAQ. It went long. It's going to give back a little bit of that profit, I'm sorry to say. So what is the point that I'm trying to make? We have a lot of algos going on for different, there's different, I guess, different boats float, different tastes that different people have, I guess. Uh, you know, if you're a swing trader, you want to know what our, our entries are, our stop losses are. On the SPY, all of that is shows up right here on the on our, our um, performance summary sheet. It tells you what, what it does, tells you your strategy PL, position size, date, time, entry. Can't miss it. Um, from here, I also like to point out that a lot of information on this board, such as A, uh, what is the ATR doing in the market? B, what is the volume doing? What is the breadth doing? All of these are very integral parts of trading when it comes to uh, the S&P 500. So when the breadth, the advanced decline is positive and you get a short uh, off the trade, be quick to get out. Now it left a little money on the table, but by gosh, it got right back in. And either way you look at it, great analysis. And it's uh, mostly what we were talking about in the live trading room on how to trade this. Today, one of our members asked me about Moderna when it first opened. Uh, and I think at 9.37 this morning, just to give you an, and an, an because the, the client had asked me, well, what do you think of, of Moderna, John? How do we trade this? At 9.37 in the morning, it was trading right here. And I said, listen, look, if you really want to get in, get in here around 98-ish, 99. And then, but look for a 93 and a half number, 93 and a half ish So whether it's 60, 70, market, as you know, the low of the day was just slightly under 50. So it was 93.50. So this was uh, the green lines that I put up on this chart right here this green line was about where to enter along and this uh and and then down here and enter along and then your stop unfortunately uh and i put a big typo there at eight dollars and eight cents that's a big stop right which should have been 8808 now that might be to some too much money but that puts you out of harm's way no one ever said that an initial risk has to be the permanent risk it's if the trade goes right you can raise the stop and you can go from loss to break even to, and, and at this point, Moderna should, if it maintains uh, a closing strength 
uh, above the, uh, say, the 97 number right here, this green line that can't be seen on the chart. So let's try to do it on our thinkorswim and just extend to the right. And there we have it. Okay. As long as we close greater than this line in the sand, I think you still have a shot to the upside going into the next couple days. Uh, several stocks that we've been talking about over the last few days and got our investors and clients in, Schlumberger. So no one, I mean, this is what we had called the peripheral markets, the, the open up market. You know, it's funny because everyone's like, I got to get into Moderna. And it's like, well, you know, Moderna is only up 9%. You got Schlumberger up 11%. So you got other companies that will benefit more than the actual drug company that's selling the vaccine. Uh, Marathon Petroleum uh, up 8%. Walgreens, one of our big holders uh, today, obviously only up 3%, but still, Walgreens had a big move. I prefer Walgreens over CVS. JetBlue, uh, I prefer JetBlue rather relative to American Airlines. Uh, we also have Nordstrom's, which to me, if we are going to see any retail open, high-end retail. Now, I like prefer, from a consumer uh, perspective, noticing trends of, of affluent individuals. Louis Vuitton. If you don't know who Louis Vuitton is, um, I'm sure you're familiar with a little champagne that you might drink at celebrations called Dom Perignon. Look at the staple of items that are under their umbrella. Um, and there's an ADR... L V M H M Y U Y. I'm sorry, I'm on a live thing. I'm, I didn't want to address Louis Vuitton right now, but anyway, there's the ATR and then there's the stock. Uh, it's a little bit different in pricing. One's a hundred dollars and change. One's five hundred and, and change, more or less. Uh, I those those names long term. Are, Louis Vuitton is is probably one of your creme de la creme of your international uh, high end retailers. But let's let's talk. Uh, the nitty-gritty here of how investors can make money. And I think Nordstrom, in the mid to higher end range of department stores, is going to win out. They have great online exposure, and it's still at $19. And you think, John, I'm not buying a stock at 19 when it was just at 14 What are you, stupid? No. Um, if you take a look at Nordstrom's, it could easily see a $30 print by year's end. And um, I think between their online, their higher end, and people want to shop, I mean, Nordstrom has a great, and I don't want to say my wife loves shoes, but my wife loves shoes. Um, you know, if mall, people go back to the mall experience, I think Nordstrom probably pays to be better positioned rather relative to a Macy's, for example. All right. And Macy's, uh, you know, they also had acquired years ago Bloomingdale's. I still think Nordstrom is a better chance choice over relative to the Macy's stock. So anyway, that's how we've been positioned. What you see here in, in our... Um, on, on the board is the stocks that we have in an AR newsletter and the stocks that we have exposure to from doing in the live trading room. Now let's move forward as I want to share with you guys uh, a couple stocks that I think it, as we close the day, uh, what what do we want to be looking at? I, I think Prudential, if you take a look here, uh, this is the 60 minute, uh, as you can see, right as we close the board, Prudential is uh, looking extremely Wholesome, one of the highest ranked stocks next to Aflac, but a Prudential in casualty life is uh, another one that I think in the financial area that's being overlooked and underplayed. It has um, some decent, here's Prudential. Look, it's it's just now starting to generate a uh, monthly buy signal. So long-term investors, here's your monthly. So we look at monthly, weekly, daily and then short term to help us time things 60 minute and then 15. So the bottom line is the overall trend is starting to show some accumulation in our proprietary uh, volume indicator on a weekly basis. It has been trying to attract some business and I think now with the um, uh, vaccines and people finding better value and wanting to invest, they're finding some opportunities. Uh, you know, is Prudential gonna retire? put you in a retirement home on a trade? Probably not, no. But I'm telling you that there is still a lot of great value out there uh, relative to, again, the key word is risk. Because, you know, trading is not risk-free as much as everyone's email says how tr easy trading is. And you know that's, you know, kind of a joke, right? Because trading requires skill, it requires timing, um, and you have to cut losses. Not even any of the best analysis that I could put out 
uh, not all my trades are correct. They lose some lose money, but it's defining when to cut the trade. That's the big difference. What I like to do is look for stocks that have outperformance and relative strength. Now, this tool that I keep referring to, Persons Market Catcher, the relative strength, that's available on Thinkorswim as well. Uh, we have and just put it on Trade Station on their radar screen so I can easily see any stock that's bright blue. It tells me we're outperforming relative to the S&P's performance. This one's Hewlett Packard, by the way. The only reason I even touched on it was because here's your relative strength reading. It's bright blue. It's suggesting that it's starting to outperform its daily percent change relative to the overall market. The weekly starting to break out. And by the way, it's been in a monthly buy signal now for three months, and it's just now getting its, its legs and momentum underway with some volume uptick. So if you're interested in, in different stocks, you can also make an assumption on my work that the low for the month is in. So even if you're interested on any dip, you can use the low for the month as your stop loss. So monthly uh, analysis can help us in several different uh, ways. Find out what longer term investors and in institutions are doing and also what the low of the time frame is and use that on any pullback as a stop loss exit strategy if you're wrong. So uh, also looking in consumer staples, like I said, the one that we're going with was um, or excuse me, is Walgreen Boots Alliance. Um, and that's kind of weird. I don't know if you just saw that. Maybe my eyes played tricks on me. I thought I just saw 666, sign of the devil. But here, um, from the omen. All right, so we have, a, boy, you want to talk about a stock that pays dividends. Forward PE is about 60, so it's a, it's a little pricey. Um, however, that's because of uh, sales. That's because of their acquisition of Boots Pharmacy chain in the UK. And I think all of that's coming into play. There's a tremendous upside in this market. And I think this is going to be the stocks, the recovery story for 2021. And in 2021, I'm expecting fully this stock to recover back to where it was at the beginning of 2019, around $70. Um, if we get any further, let me just explain to you one other cautionary. Don't be just too hasty to jump into Walgreens because, I mean, on average, we're in from about like here. Um, up at this level, this line in the sand, we have this little situation that would be developing here in a lot of stocks too. We're excited about the market. We have some good upside. We've got you know a potential change of uh, of uh, leadership at the White House. We've got potential um, vaccines coming sooner rather than later. We have a lot of great potentials, and the market does one thing great. It it's a forward thinker. So right now it's putting in a lot of spectacular gains in anticipation that all thing is going to go well <laughs> as if we know how that story will end with a nasty correction one day in the meantime there's also other technical factors that take over in the market stocks that are down on the year when they rally towards the last say two weeks of the year like so between now and say the second week of december most stocks that are down on the year tend to get liquidated unless something dry, dynamic changes to get liquidated for a tax loss credit selling opportunity. So if you could take a loss on a stock, maybe not a heavy loss, but a small loss on a stock and offset those losses with something else like gains that you have had in maybe Zoom or anything else under the sun, Wayfair, for example, that's a good idea. Walgreens might be susceptible for end of year tax loss credit selling, especially as it tries to approach the highs that we saw back in May, er, in March, excuse me, as well as June, those two highs right up in here. All right, so I spent a little too much time explaining that on Walgreens. Let me tell you what I like moving forward into the market. As far as retail, any stock, uh, by the way, I have a, uh, a little theory that with, um, at least Amazon. Amazon's relative strength is decreasing and it's red, not good. Its volume uh, is also not showing accumulation. It's actually revealing distribution. Look, we've started to see the momentum of volume start to creep lower. That's the person volume indicator. And it's been negative. The relative strength has been weakening relative to the S&P 500 ever since the peak here in August, okay? I mean, that's the moral of the story. We've got a potential double top in the market over here. 
but we also have a sequence of now a lower high and lower lows. So my guess is that we're more than likely to see a downside action in Amazon, not an upside move in the near term. Why? Well, if a lot of other retailers do better, Amazon, uh, I'm just suggesting that this chart action here is not as friendly to me as other chart patterns are for a continuation up. So it wouldn't surprise me to see downside action in Amazon over the next 90 days as we head into the end of the year as well uh, and into January. Here's one thing that I wanted to, to point out to you. A daily or more importantly, a weekly close less than that open of that little green candle right there. We close less than that for the first time may signal a trigger to go short or buy maybe option strategies, bear put butterflies, especially unweighted, do very well for Amazon. So watch for that trigger to the downside. I'm not a fan of buying stocks when the relative strength weakens and there's no volume on, on recovery off lows. So that's a, a, a precursor or warning. What we may be seeing is the rotation out of Amazon and into the um, you know, peripheral stocks, the garbage stocks that haven't moved. I mean, Walgreens not a garbage company. And again, energies are, are garbage relative to, you know, where they've traded all year, right? But not right now. Another one that I think is opening up is this guy right here, Cardinal Health. Well, it already did open up and we tried to get into this one. We missed it. One thing I wouldn't do is chase it right now, especially up here. So the stocks that I like will still be on pullbacks um, not every single uh, medical or drug company, but the, some of these medical stocks and especially healthcare providers, Cardinal might do well, Tenant Healthcare might do well. We'll be watchful of that. In transportation, I'm not suggesting that we, you know, see um, invest your entire family fortune in, in airline stocks. But again, I want to stick to the airline stocks that. Uh, we've loved Alaskan Air. We bought some of that at like 36 months ago. It's really, it's finally generating some upside. But last week, we posted out to look at JetBlue. So unfortunately, maybe that wasn't the greatest uh, call in the world because it hasn't really performed that well. I mean, it's up some bucks, don't get me wrong, but it hasn't performed that well. But JetBlue, to me, um, with the relative strength and this... Um, Again, the monthly charts suggest that it could really see some uh, accelerated gains. And, and then finally, um, I think for today's action or moving forward, besides the energy, besides some retail, coals again, little things like that, Dine Equity and Darden. Dine and Darn. Darn and Dine. Meaning Dine Equity and Darden. Sorry. Dine and Darn. I was trying to be funny. It didn't come out right. So Dine Equity, it's... I mean, here's, here's a stock up 8.5%. You don't need to be a, a rocket scientist to say, hey, I need to chase Moderna to make money. There's these peripheral stocks. That <laughs> well, Garden restaurants chains, uh, it's only up 2%. But again, it's already had a, a pretty amazing run already. This is our PPS buy signal. So for the last four months, it's already been in a walloping of a buy. So out of the, if you had to look at a, a restaurant group, an equity group, I would suggest maybe some dine equity over the next couple of days. Um, so Hewlett Packard, uh, I think uh, in the bank sector, uh, USB uh, also is another one that looks uh, fairly robust. Um, the stocks for what we would um, suggest to people and even in the utility sector, uh, you know, they look pretty good. We had exposure. We dumped uh, AEP at around 92 uh, a couple weeks back. And up near the highs because the, and I'll share the reason why. And again, when the relative strength, and this is the relative strength person market catcher, when a stock makes a new high and the relative strength isn't showing true signs of outperformance and the volume action is weakening, man, that's an exit stage left snaggle puss. Get out of the trade. Now, we were talking about maybe a re entry in case I was wrong because we. We bought the stock in here and we sold the stock up there and it's got had a wedge pattern. You can see my old technical trend lines in here I put in, um, but it broke down. So it's going to take a lot for me to want to get back in. What would it have to do to get to, to want me to get back in? 
First off, I'd like to see it get back above the pivot. That's the blue line in the sand. So if you don't know anything about person's pivots or pivot point analysis, uh, generally I'll give you one of my favorite setups right here. Stocks that tend to give the PPS buy signal that are above pivot levels uh, is a great trade setup. And if the market's truly bullish, the pivot, which is that blue line, should act as the low in a, in a market environment on bullish uptrends. When the pivot starts acting as resistance, it's uh, if you're bullish, el no bueno, it's no good. So again, in today's video, I just or, or an update after Moderna, the, the 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 thing to walk away with is that the market's truly bullish. We got uh, MPC, you got energies that may look expensive, but they're really not. Schlumberger is not that expensive. Nordstrom's not that expensive relative to where it could go. Kimberly Clark now is expensive. We were looking at, uh, and just to, to share that with you here, we were looking at Kimberly Clark and looking for a breakout. The green level is the breakout. The red is where the stop goes. Now you could clearly see that we, we got that little breakout in Kimberly Clark. Um, so again, there's a lot of really good things. These two here are spreads, the Russell versus the Dow, and this is Feb cattle versus June cattle in the futures. And I would suggest that this is another way of trading commodities via spreads and one thing that we've done for decades and, and helped investors with. There's a lot of videos that we've had on how to set up a spread chart on Thinkorswim. You can go and look at our YouTube channel and look for more of that. Anyway, I hope you found today's, um, it's a little bit long, but it, the message is simply that the stock market is still bullish. It can still go up a lot higher. Uh, our active trade since uh, we were talking to you and since this video started, look what happened. Already, the uh, position is out of half. It was long, too, and it covered at profit, and now it has a trailing stop mechanism on the balance. So uh, the profit that you see here is based on now one long. Remember, we were in two. So this is how the algo optimizer works uh, here in our live trading community, how people can take a look at, gee, if I get in, what's my risk and what's my intended profit target? And um, that's, that's what we've been doing around here. So there's ways to trade this market. I still think dips are going to be bought. It's, um, uh, I'm telling you, I, my uh, prognostication is calling for around a 375 area. Could be 72, could be 77. I'll let you know when it gets there. But uh, I see more upside. We are positioned as such. And I'll finally stop talking and leave you with this, if I may. Um, for this week's newsletter, uh, or at least uh, a lot of the positions that we were in, uh, call spreads, the 62, 72 call spreads, um, were long MS, long uh, gold miners, the junior miners from 4146. We did put a collar on that. We bought back the short call. We remain with a deep in the money put, 51 put, because of course GDXJ is above that level. Uh, long full position in Walgreen Boots Alliance, long uh, some MPC, and long the Jet Blue. It's coming into Monday. Um, we are, uh, by the way, performance for the year, uh, once, almost 180%. We dumped a bunch of stuff last week, tried to rotate into other things, and then picked up some call options, as I just mentioned. So our option strategies, our performance is only 62% on our options, and you would say, person, you suck. No, if you look through here, you'll notice that a lot of these percent numbers are from hedges. So while we've lost money on the hedge, we've made money on the stock. So, oh yeah, so we just uh, put everything in, and by the way, our, our actual trades are uh, extremely profitable, especially back from February where we were in the S&P 500 puts. Uh, that was certainly some really good stuff there. Anyway, this is every trade that we've done in the newsletter advisory service this year. Not just the winners, the winners and the losers all combined. So that's, uh, that's what we try to put out each and every week. And also, again, uh, this is in writing. Thank you for listening. I hope you at least get an idea. And I wanted to just say, what are we trying to do? So when we write this up on a weekend, I don't know that Moderna is coming out. I wish I did, right? It would be called Insider Trading Information. Um, I like Amber Crombie and Fitch. We're going to revise these numbers. We like Philip Van Heusen, Schlumberger, Jet Brew, Marathon Petroleum, Nordstrom's, and, and Raytheon Technology. Time to look at Raytheon, by the way, RTX. Thanks for watching, and we'll come back with more information as the markets uh, uh, allow me to uh, present to you guys. Thanks for watching.